a good sense of where you are. But for me, one of the most comforting things when I'm lost is knowing that someone is looking for me. And the good news is that God is always looking for us. And that's a little bit of what we'll be talking about today. So Lord, we thank you for the privilege of gathering together. We come from so many different sets of circumstances, but we come with a common purpose to lift up the name of Jesus and to worship you for who you are. So would you inhabit the praises of your people this morning? Help us to sense your presence in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Would you stand as we worship the Lord this morning? Listen to the promise of scripture from Isaiah 12 as the prophet Isaiah speaks of the Messiah. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. And proclaim that, the, that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout al- aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. Today we light this candle as a symbol of Christ, who is the visible love of God the Father. Let us pray. Eternal and everlasting God, if we ever ask the question, how much do you love us, we only need to look as far as the cross. We remember today that as you have loved us, so now we are to love one another. Deepen our love for you and for each other. We pray this in the strong name of our risen Savior, Jesus. Amen.
join me uh, in your bulletin or on the screen as we pray together our morning prayer? As we say together, Eternal Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to prepare for the coming of our salvation in Jesus Christ. We pray that you would give us grace to heed their call. Help us to turn away from our pride, our commitment to selfish gain, and actions that hurt others as we focus on the birth of Christ that first Christmas. Let your love grow in us, even as we wait for the glorious coming of Jesus with joy. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Scripture lesson this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, uh, verses 9 through 11, and you can find that on page 667 uh, in the first section uh, of your pew Bibles. And we find God speaking through the prophet saying, Get up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and the hearing and the understanding of his word. What a beautiful way to celebrate the Christmas season. I hope that you're finding time in this, what can be a busy time for many. Uh, I hope you're finding time to enjoy it 
and to celebrate uh, all that God has given us in Christ. Uh, again, my name is Bob Swickard, the pastor here, and I want to welcome you to worship today. Uh, I'm guessing that you all got a bulletin on your way in, and inside there is a Making Connection card, and if you'd sign that for yourself and those who are with you, uh, you can put this in the offering plate when it comes by a little bit later uh, in the worship service. If there are things that are going on in your life that you'd like us to know about and be praying for, uh, you can put those on the back. Uh, if you'd like more information about ministries or, or opportunities here at Wesley, uh, you can check the boxes that apply for that. Uh, I hope that you'll take some time to look through the announcement sheet because there are many things uh, being passed on in those announcements. Um, one, just to bring your attention to, is uh, for many people, it's very meaningful to celebrate communion through Advent. And so we wanted to offer that opportunity. Uh, so every Sunday uh, at 9.45, uh, 9.40, uh, we're gathering in the chapel right down the hall. And if you'd like to celebrate communion today after this service, at, again, 9.40 to 9.45 in there, uh, please come down and join us. Even if the door is closed, just walk on in and, and join us uh, in progress. You're welcome to do that uh, as a way of celebrating communion together. Um, also, just a few things to be aware of. Uh, the caregivers meeting tomorrow night, uh, for those of you who are going to be at that meeting, uh, just a reminder for that meeting. Also, th there's no more Bible study in 2015 of the story. Uh, we're, we won't be meeting this Wednesday or the Wednesday following, so we will resume that study uh, in January, the first Wednesday. Uh, also, you might uh, know that uh, we have a little uh, holiday coming up this week uh, on Friday. So Thursday night, we're, we're going to have a little celebration, uh, actually quite a bit of celebration in this room. Uh, we're going to have a 3 o'clock service and a 7 o'clock service and an 11 p.m. service. Uh, the 3 o'clock service will be celebrating communion together, uh, and that will give you an opportunity. Uh, handbells will be doing most of the music at the 3 o'clock service. 7 o'clock service will be more of a family-oriented service because we're going to have uh, a deal for kids K through 5th grade down in the gym uh, it's going to be a, a fun magic show for them and a, and a way to, to celebrate a birthday party for Jesus down the hall in a way that they can all understand. And then at 11 o'clock, a traditional 11 o'clock service, each one of those services, the 3, the 7, and the 11, will end with candlelight and silent night. Uh, so we hope that you'll uh, invite your friends and come be a part of one of the Christmas Eve services uh, this coming Thursday. Uh, also, um, there are places to serve. Uh, for those of you that have been looking for a place to serve, here's some very tangible and meaningful places. Uh, on that Christmas Eve service night, we need lots of, of servants still for uh, the nursery, uh, to staff the nursery at the 3 o'clock and the 7 o'clock especially, for ushers and for greeters uh, at each of the services. Uh, if you go out these doors and just go to the right, there's a table there with a sign-up sheet, and you can sign up and help serve uh, to cover so that we can make everyone feel welcome that comes to worship on Thursday. Uh, also, there's a caroling announcement there. For those of you who have been dying to get out and go carol, uh, there's an opportunity for you this week, so make sure you see that one. Uh, and then uh, another reminder just about the offering. You know, every month our mission council has a focal point, uh, and um, we wanted to, our Christmas Eve service offering will go toward that as well. And so this year it's going to three, it's being split in three ways. Uh, one area that's receiving that is a CHS food pantry. The other is Golden Cross, which are 10 um, agencies across uh, our conference um, that are health-related and uh, children-focused uh, and elderly-focused, and then the Global Refugee Migration. You can find all that information in your bulletin, uh, but we want to be rem reminded that, you know, Christmas isn't about us, uh, and so we get to be a blessing to someone else. There, there will be baskets set up uh, at the back of the worship space on, at each of the services on Thursday. And if you'd like to, to give, um, that's a great way to do that. Well, those are all the announcements that I have. Again, I hope that you'll look at the rest in your bulletins. And I want to invite the, our young friends to come forward as we sing uh, the first stanza of I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
just us up here, huh? Yeah, well, here's a question for you. Have you ever played uh, hide and seek? You have? Which do you like better, hiding or seeking? You like hiding better? Why? Because you, you want them to find you? Yeah. Do, do you like seeking as much? Not so much, huh? Yeah. Well, playing hide and seek is kind of fun, right? Because it's just a game. Well, have you ever been lost? If you've been like in a store and or somewhere out in public and you couldn't find your mom or dad, have you ever had that happen? Yeah, that's a good thing. Because you know what? That's not as fun as playing hide and seek. When if we're I once I was lost when I was really little and I couldn't find my mom and dad, and it was kind of scary, you know. But the neat thing was is that even though I couldn't find them, I knew they were looking for me. And there's a story that I know about a dog. Have you ever had a dog? No? Well, we've got a couple dogs. Well, this story is about a guy that lost his dog, and he couldn't find it anywhere. And so he put up posters all around town. And it, the poster said, lost dog. He only has three legs. He only has one eye. He only has part of one ear because of a, of a scuff he got into with another dog. He's missing part of his tail, and he goes by the name of Lucky. Now, you would think that a dog that has that many problems wouldn't be very lucky. But you know what? You know what made that dog so lucky? Is that someone was looking Someone that loved him very much was looking for him. And you know, the Bible teaches us that God is always looking for each one of us. And God loves it when he finds us. And that's something that we celebrate at Christmas even. Because God came to the world to show us who he is. And that's what we celebrate. So Lord, I thank you so much that you look for us always. Even when we don't know where we are in life, you know exactly where we are. And so we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite our ushers to prepare to receive the morning offering because every week we have an opportunity to bring before God the gifts that God has first entrusted to us. And as we bring these gifts into worship and present them to God, what we are doing is we're honoring the giver and we're empowering ministry to happen in and through Wesley. So may God bless you as we bring our tithes and gifts and offerings to
for giving us the gifts that you have blessed us with. We bring forth these gifts that you've given to us to further your kingdom and bless those of your children. I ask that you're with me right now as I bring a message forth and just speak to this congregation and uh, um, just speak the words that you want them to hear. In your name I pray. Amen. Skyler starts. I just want to say um, it is such an honor to have this young lady here today. Uh, the Lord has uh, blessed Skyler uh, deeply and, uh, and is using Skyler in many ways uh, to, bless, uh, to bless all of us. And so I asked Skyler if she would speak today uh, because we've been looking at these uh, gift exchanges and no one can speak to this like Skylar. So would you help me welcome Skylar James as she brings the word today? So like Bob said, my name is Skylar, and if you don't know me, it's probably because I don't come to 8.30 service that often. I usually cannot wake up at this time, but I did. I'm here. I'm awake. So um, I am in school right now up in Chicago, so I'm not around here much anymore, but I've grown up here pretty much my whole life, and so I'm very blessed to know all of you and be here today. So how many of you, like we said, have been lost before? All hands should be up. Like, it's a, not a rare occurrence. It happens quite often. And there's so many ways that we can be lost. Like, as a kid, I remember getting lost in Walmart. It was really fun. Like, it was just fun. You kind of just run away. And, but you always find your way back. <laughs> um, I have a friend and I uh, who, when we always go to Champagne together, if she is driving, no matter what, we're going to get lost. I don't know how, but like, it's the simplest drive in the world. But we're always like 10 minutes out of the way somehow. I'm not sure. It's always an adventure. So, um, but there's many ways to get lost in life. Um, the easiest one is directional wise and physically, but there's also spiritually and emotionally the feeling of lost. Um, and this could happen in many places throughout our life. Um, when you're growing up, you can be lost knowing what is cool and who your friends are. Um, but you can also be lost in uh, different phases in your life, some that I haven't hit yet. Um, and they can be the happiest times of your life, but also just really confusing and scary. Um, I know in college right now, I there's some times where I'm like, God, I don't know where you're leading me, but I am completely lost, so just kind of take control. Um, so I'm blessed to know many of you, but I'm not sure if you all know me. And like Bob said, he wanted, to sh he wanted me to share a little bit about my life with you today. So when I was born, I was abandoned in a cemetery. And that's like shocking. <laughs> um, but that's a part of my life. And it's just a huge part of my story and how I've grown up. And it's gotten to be almost like normal for me to like understand that. But through growing up, it's been so confusing and it's left me completely lost throughout my life at points. Um, because why would anyone leave a child where other people are laid to rest? It, it's just mind boggling and confusing and scary and hard to understand at points. There would be times in my life that I would share with people um, that I felt comfortable with, like throughout middle school and high school that, you know, I was abandoned as a child and left in a cemetery and they wouldn't believe me. They would just tell me I was lying because who would do that? That's not really something that anyone would ever do. So that added a whole nother part of confusion onto my life, trying to understand that. Um, so just growing up was really hard for me. Growing up in general is hard, trying to figure out who you are, but then adding that on top of everything. Um, but you see everyone in their life has a story or a part of their life that leads them for 
that leaves them lost and confused and for a loss. Thankfully for me, I've seen God work like wonders in my life. Um, I've just seen his hand move me and move people in my life. When I should have been dead, God sent a guardian angel to find me in a pile of leaves and save my life. God also gave me a loving family to raise me and show me what love is. God also has sent so many amazing leaders and friends and role models into my life to speak truth and love and just um, what God's plan for my life is. But obviously it wasn't always like that. Um, I remember one point in my life when I was so, I was just done. I had so much anger, so much bitterness, um, just so much hatred towards mostly my birth mother because I was trying to understand it and I couldn't and I just hated her. And I was just, that's how I was going to live my life. And it was till one point in my life where God had just sent a peer and he was talking to us about how he grew up in an abusive household where he was beaten and just horribly talked to, um, spoken down to, wasn't raised up like we should be as children. Um, But instead of letting that hatred uh, into his life, he gave forgiveness, and it just shocked me. I was so confused how somebody could give forgiveness for all of that, and it clicked that, like, God was speaking to me at that moment through someone my age who had already gotten it, who had understood what forgiveness was, that you don't need it in your life. Um, and I just, like, heard God speaking to me that There's no reason why I should hate her or hate anything else in my life because I have a pretty awesome life. Um, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now, and I'm so thankful for, like, everything I have. So why, why should I be angry? Why I should just let that all go and live in love because God is with me, God is in control, and God has a bigger plan for my life than anyone else, than any hatred could control. The wonderful part is that even when we are lost, there's a way out. And the only way out of being lost is through true love. And the true love that we receive isn't humanly. Yes, we have humanly love um, that comes from God, and it's wonderful, but the only true love is God himself. And that first gift of true love came on Christmas. Um, so if we look back at the Christmas story, I, I don't even know where I would begin if I was Mary. First, she's only truly a child. She's probably 16 or 18 years old and is engaged which is supposed to be the happiest time of your life. And then she finds out she's pregnant with not the soon-to-be husband, but it's God's child. That's just confusing. I would be completely lost. And even though Mary, we know Mary had so much faith. That's why God chose her. But still, there's got to be doubt and confusion and loss. Why would he choose one he loves to put through that confusion and lost. And then we look at Joseph, who now has a soon-to-be wife who's now pregnant. That's not very good. Um, (laughs) Yet, then angels appear and tell him that it's God's child. Angels probably wouldn't calm me down at that point. They would probably scare me more than anything. And now they both have to go on a journey to Bethlehem, where Mary's probably never been before. And Joseph has to take his hormonal pregnant, soon-to-be wife, on a very long journey. 
If that story doesn't leave you lost and confused, I don't know what would, because I would be in a mess. <laughs> Yet through all of that, God sends the biggest gift of love to fix the whole situation. Yes, there was confusion to begin with and being so lost in the mess of the situation, but yet the whole earth receives the biggest gift of love through it all. There's a Christmas song that uh, has been my favorite for a couple of years now, and it's called Be Born in Me by Francesca Battistelli, and it's sung from Mary's perspective and one of the verses says this. You can read it on the screen with me. All this time we've waited for the promise. All this time we've waited for my arms. Did you wrap yourself inside the unexpected so we might know that love would go that far? The first line talks about the promise that appears in Genesis and throughout the Old Testament that talks about God saving all who love and believe in him. So when they expect that promise, they expect it coming in with a big bang, and then all of a sudden, it's unexpectedly in a manger, wrapped in cloth, and it's a baby. It's unexpected that God would come in that way, that God would come as a child who poops, who cries, who's hungry, who needs to be taken care of. When we expect God, we expect that he's just going to take care of himself and take care of us. Yet Mary and Joseph and everyone had to take care of Jesus when he was born. And it's unexpected. There's so many ways that God unexpectedly shows up in life. And God ex unexpectedly showed up like a gentle little child. So where are the ways that God has shown up unexpectedly in your life? I don't know about you guys, but my friends and I called these God moments that if a situation happened and there's no other way it could have happened, but without God. God just had a complete hand in it. And most of the time, they can be little reminders that just God is in control, or they can be huge reminders that just click you back on the right track. Um, luckily, this semester, God clicked me in the right track again because I don't know what I was thinking. But um, this semester, I decided to get my DNA tested because that's something that I didn't know about myself and that I wanted to learn and I was just ready to take that step and so I contacted an organization um, that worked with adopted kids to get all of their genetic information um, because it's stuff that we don't know and the genetic testing organizations were not giving out all of the genetic information they were only giving out ethnic and or heritage um, information. So I was working for weeks on getting a hold of this organization. And if you know anything about me, you know that I am probably the most impatient person that has ever been on the earth. I just like, I hate waiting. I like everything to be on time and ready, and it just needs to be here, and I don't want to wait for it. Um, that's probably one of my biggest downfalls. But so I was, you know, already anticipating getting my test. So I was on the phone with Holly from the organization, and I ordered my test tube, spit in the test tube, sent it to Holly, who was then going to put the letter in the test or in the kit who was then going to send it to the lab to get tested, who then, which then three months-ish later, it would come to me and I would get all my information. Now, if that isn't confusing for you, congratulations, because it was completely confusing for me and I was lost halfway through the process. Um, 
but I had finally gotten my kit and sent it off to Holly and was waiting for confirmation that she had received the package and that we were moving on in the process. And a week later, she still hadn't received the kit. And I was like, okay, where is it? So we were calling and making sure all the addresses were right, and turns out she had given me the wrong address. So it was completely lost. There was no tracking number on it, and I was just upset, angry, annoyed. I was just done. Um, I wanted the information now, and I couldn't get that information now, so I was just, my friends just had to sit me down and calm me down and send me to bed because I was done. <laughs> um, but, so we were searching for like weeks and weeks for this package because after a certain amount of time, it's not eligible anymore to be tested. So $100 that I had spent on the kit, which is a lot of money for me as a college student, I don't make that much money, <laughs> but um, it was just gone. It disappeared. Um, somehow, Holly, three weeks later, had received the package, and it was just waiting at her door for her, and I had no idea, but she was ready, and she put the letter in and was sending it off to the DNA testing lab, <laughs> so... I'd, we put a tracking number on it this time, so it didn't get lost again. Um, but as, a day before it got to the lab, I had gotten an email from the genetic testing company that the FDA had finally approved for them to give out all of the genetic information for the test tubes that they would receive with, um, within the next couple days, which made my test tube eligible to give me all of my genetic information, which is something I would not have had if it had been there a month ago like I would have wanted. And I just sat down after reading that email, after like being really, really happy, and just was like, oh, that was God. Um, it was God's big reminder or little reminder that no amount of time can be surpassed and that God is in control and that no matter what, no matter anything, the importance of a test is not as important as God's love for me. Because God already knows everything about me, so it doesn't really matter. I'll find out someday. But God is in control, and God has a hand in everything. If we look back to the first Christmas, I probably couldn't have been married because I would have been impatient the whole time. First of all, you find out you're pregnant, and then you find out it's God, the promise that you've been waiting for for years, ever since you were born, that that promise is in you, and that you're going to help deliver the promise, but you have to wait nine months. That wouldn't be me. I would just be like, let's do it now. Um, so impatient, but <laughs> that's okay. So, unexpectedly, she is expecting, and then, through it all, when Jesus is born, God unexpectedly surrounds her with love. First of all, he gives her the biggest gift of love anyone will ever receive, and then shepherds come, and she's surrounded by animals that are God's creation, that love God as much as we do, and then magi come to bring gifts and show their love and appreciation for Christ. She was surrounded by love. Jesus was surrounded by love. There was just love all around. Even though Christmas can be one of the happiest times of the year, it can also be one of the craziness, craziest times of the year. And we can choose to be lost in getting the perfect gift for everyone or lost in the hustle and bustle and travel of the season or lost in the passing of the past year or just lost in the schedule that we have to be on time. We can get lost in it all, yet we should choose to be lost in the love that was given to us on the first Christmas. 
we should choose to be lost in love for God because God is love and God brought love to us. The gift of Christ who was born for all to give us salvation and love. There's a simple verse in Luke that perfectly shows the connection of being lost, turning into love. And it's Luke 19.10. Jesus says, or it says, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus came for all of us. In every stage of our life, God is right by our side. And even if he's not right by her si our side, he's probably carrying us. Because I know God carries me most of the time because I'm just sinful. I'm a human. I am wrong. But God is always right. God's love for us always is there. It never leaves us. It's always right there. It's surrounding us. That's the greatest part, that no matter how lost you are, no matter how confused, no matter any case in your life, God's love for you is everlasting, and it will always be there. Because it came on the first Christmas as a small child that was unexpected. So during Christmas, there are is so much loss because most people don't know who Christ is. They don't know the spiritual blessing of love that we've been given. So this Christmas season, I encourage you to step out because you know the love that Christ has given you and share that because that's the greatest gift. Don't worry about anything else. Just share the greatest gift of love that Christ has given to all of us. So, will you please bow your heads with me? Dear Lord, we come to you today with open hearts and just, we're so thankful for the gifts that you've given us. We can see in our lives where we have gone wrong and stepped off our path, but you always guide us back. You always give us that love to bring us out of our lost phases. We ask that you are with everyone today, those in this room and those who are not with us, that they would experience your love because it's the greatest gift we could ever receive. We thank you so much for sending Jesus, your only son, to Bethlehem to be born for us. Again, we thank you for everything that you've given us. In your name we pray. Amen. So this morning, um, I talked about a song, and it's called Be Born in Me. So this song is just, I love it. It gives me, like, chills every time I hear it. So as you're listening and reading along with the words, Make this your prayer this morning, that Jesus is born in your heart as much as he was born in Bethlehem.
do give you thanks for all the many ways that you have been involved in each one of our lives. God, we can look back over our lives at various points and, and wonder, were you there? And yet your word tells us over and over and over again, yes, with an exclamation point. There is not any moment of our lives that has ever been apart from your gaze and from your grace and from your love. So Lord, for that we give you thanks today. And we do echo that prayer that you would be born anew in us this Christmas. Lord, we come together as a, as a body of believers and we come before your throne of grace and we pray, Lord, that you would meet each one of us at the point of our deepest need because you know our needs even before we ask. And yet you invite us to ask anyway. And maybe it's here, Lord, that we discover that what you desire most is the relationship. And so, Lord, we pray for one another this morning. God, there's a lot of sickness that's going through uh, this town and even through our congregation. And we pray for those who've been affected by illness and we pray that you would bring healing. 
There are those here, Lord, today and those who aren't here who are going through difficult uh, medical things because they don't know exactly what they're facing. And Lord, we pray that you would give the doctors wisdom as they care for each one. And we ask that you would bring healing to them as well. We pray, Lord, for uh, those who are in need of your forgiveness. For anyone who might feel as though they've, been, they've gone too far, they've crossed too many lines, they've done too many things. Lord, your grace reminds us that no matter how far we've gone, your grace goes farther. And we stand amazed at who you are. So Lord, would you bring a peace into each one of our hearts today? Would you bring a peace to this world that is so troubled? And would you use each one of us to be conduits of your grace in all of our relationships? We ask all these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, if you would stand, uh, let's lift our many voices up as one as we sing this closing hymn, Blessed Be the God of Israel. this Christmas. Maybe you're with Janice like she talked about a couple weeks ago. Maybe it's just been a really blue Christmas or maybe you are celebrating like we talked about last week. But no matter where you are, know that God goes with you and that he will always be by your side. He'll go with you along the way and stay with you forever. Amen. Amen.